Today's video is going to be key for anyone looking to improve the quality of contact with their irons. We're going to be discussing the role of the lead shoulder and how we should actually compress the golf ball and get more open with this magic move. Make sure you check out this video. Well, I can't hit them much better than that. Really happy with the quality of strike, but also the ball flight I got there. I'm hitting a mid iron here, a six iron. This video is really gonna be relevant with the role of the lead shoulder, especially focusing on improving the contact of your irons. So you'll have seen there, I started with a drill, an exercise. Now you could just use a club across your shoulders. I was just using something a little longer, perhaps to be a little bit more visual for this video, uh, but anything you can grab to pop across your shoulders. And I guess we've got three key moves in there. So let me just talk you through them first of all, really focusing, as I mentioned, on the role of the lead shoulder as we do it. So the, how we're gonna set up is we're gonna make sure the club or the stick, the cane is high across the shoulders and as level as possible. We're gonna get into golf posture and we're gonna be making a backswing. And what we're trying to do on the backswing here is complete a full 90 degree turn, okay? So I could make that a little more visual and I could even put a, a club or a cane between my feet as well. Now you may, may well have seen me do this before if you're not new to my channel. So I've got this cane actually slightly closer to my trail foot, just on the inside of my trail thigh. And that means I'm actually creating a full 90 degree shoulder turn and actually turning my shoulders a little bit behind the golf ball in my backswing to help me really load that pressure into my trail foot as I'm moving backwards. Now it's not just a turn, my shoulders have to be turning on a tilted axis. So I also want my lead shoulder moving not only behind the golf ball, but also a little bit down. Okay, and this means almost that I'm gonna be getting this stick club across my shoulders, pointing down to the ground. It's not gonna point at the golf ball, that would be too vertical, too steep with the shoulders. It should be pointing a little bit outside the golf ball. So I normally use as a reference point around three feet or so outside the golf ball. I may just put uh, a larger tee peg here, one of my wave tees, that blue tee, just out in front of me, around three foot, in line with this orange stick. So I'm making a full 90 degree shoulder turn and actually getting my lead shoulder to point down. Now, a lot of people are worried as they get older, well, I can't make that 90 degree shoulder turn. You can, you just need to actually allow the hips to perhaps turn a little bit more in the backswing. So we're not trying to resist here. There is gonna be hip turn. So the less flexible, less mobile you are, you're potentially gonna to have to turn your hips a little bit more in the backswing, but it's perfectly acceptable to get those hips to turn sort of half of the shoulder turn. So I might be making 90 shoulder turn and closer to 40, 45 degrees of hip turn, depending on your levels of flexibility. But I can complete my shoulder turn there behind the golf ball. So that's a real key move. That helps me complete my backswing, load into my backswing as well. It feels a very big power move. So the second move, once we've completed our backswing, is what I'm gonna call the spearing movement, okay? So we're looking for the lead shoulder moving forwards and a little bit down. What a lot of golfers get wrong here is the lead shoulder moves up, and it might even move up and backwards. It's probably more likely that you are moving forwards, but you are moving that lead shoulder to upwards, and that is causing a height gain, a postural movement where I am losing my spine angle, so I'm moving up towards vertical in that early extension movement. So I'm looking for the lead shoulder to move down and forwards. And that's that spearing movement because you can see that the stick is starting to point to the ground. Now, it's not gonna, at the start of the downswing, get fully open. So you can see as I come to halfway down, my shoulders are now perhaps back to 45 degrees. They were 90 here in the backswing. They're now down to more like 45 as my arms are halfway down. So I'm still getting the feeling, you know, that I am keeping my upper body back. I'm not turning my upper body to the target anywhere near as quick as I'm turning my hips at the start of the downswing, but there is that spearing movement of the lead shoulder moving down and forwards, okay? 
and you can see from the downline camera here that's really helped me maintain my postural tilt so I am still bending forwards from my hips so down and forwards by the time I get towards impact my shoulders should be pretty square to the target line we'd like our torso it's hard to see that perhaps on video to be slightly open so my chest but my shoulders actually would appear to be pretty square into impact. My hips would be hopefully a little bit more open into impact. But we're focusing on the roll of that lead shoulder. So complete the turn. Spear down and forwards. Now I've almost got to feel like I push up as I rotate. So my lead shoulder is actually going to move up and behind me to allow some extension of my body and my body to keep rotating. So the three key moves, one is completing that backswing turn. So it's turning on that tilted axis there, winding up 90 degrees, pointing down at that blue tee peg about three feet outside the golf ball. I'm turning my shoulders behind the golf ball. Now it's that spearing movement, lead shoulder down and forwards, okay? Now I'm in this delivery position, I'm over the golf ball with my chest, I'm ready to compress the golf ball. Now I've really got to get my lead shoulder out of the way. I've got to extend and rotate. So my lead shoulder is moving up and forwards. And how I want you to start with that on the driving range, practice area, whatever it might be, is I want you to break the golf swing into those three parts just for a few exercises. So complete that shoulder turn, lead shoulder moving down and behind the golf ball. Lead shoulder moving down and forwards into this delivery position. From here, we're just gonna get that lead shoulder moving up and to the left for me as a right-handed golfer. Okay, up and rotating. Didn't strike that very well, it's a little bit hard. My excuse is it's quite hard doing that while talking and I probably st took a little bit too long. So let me just roll through it. That move there, up and forwards. Now if you're finding, and I'm catching them just a little heavy there. If you're finding them catching a little bit heavy, I want you to really focus on from this position, and we may well be exaggerating this movement, but from this position, I really want you to use those vertical forces. We're gonna feel like we're jumping, pushing off the ground into impact. Massive, massive power source, really gonna help you get body, body open into impact, really gonna help you connect what the arms are doing to what the body's doing. So there is hand action, there is arm action, of course, into impact, but we're really focusing here on the big driving force, the body movement into impact. So we're rotating and we're rising. Let's strike this one better. There we go. So all I did to improve the quality of contact there was really focus on almost those vertical forces, really allowing my body to push off the ground. The first couple where I caught them a little heavy, it just felt like I stayed down a little too long. So really concentrate. If you do catch them heavy when you're starting that move, up and forwards, really get that body to rotate. So I do quite a lot of those and I'd integrate those with some some full shots, you might do five exercises, five full shots, five exercises, five full shots. Then grab the club or the cane that you're using across, across the shoulders and do it again. So let's see if I can just put that into a full golf swing. So another one down my target line, just a little bit toey. Whenever you're trying something new, what I always say to my pupils is don't worry about the first at least 10 swings, right? So if you're trying something new, if it's feeling a little bit different, if you're conscious of that movement, don't expect to initially strike it fantastic. You may just hit it a little bit worse just for those first five or 10. The key is keep going with it. Take a look on video. See if you're actually achieving the movement you want. We've got to get that to more of an ingrained movement to be able to take to the golf course. So you don't go straight into a metal round with this new movement. 
but this is something you can work on at home or on the driving range practice area to ingrain that feel so by the time you get to the course it feels a little bit more natural you may put that into a practice swing but I wouldn't be massively conscious on the golf course of what you're trying to feel here with that lead shoulder movement it'd be too many thoughts going on you potentially could go with the feel of that lead shoulder moving up and inwards so it's a, a feel movement but I wouldn't be as conscious perhaps about the initial part the start of the downswing just because our downswing is over so quickly right? it's you know, kind of 0 0.2 ish of a second we haven't got a lot of conscious time so it's ingraining those movements and this depends on where your fault lies it may be that you don't need to work on all of this but actually focusing on the role of the lead shoulder there does a lot of things for my golf swing it helps me complete my back swing helps me get the right tilts in my golf swing helps me shift my pressure towards my lead side helps me maintain my posture and lastly, really helps me get open into impact. So starting to rotate and rise. There's a lot of benefits to focusing on one part of the golf swing. And obviously our focus for this video was the lead shoulder. So let's hit one last one to finish with there. Complete my back swing, lead shoulder behind the golf ball and down. Spear movement, get open. Give it a go. Let me know how you get on with it. So put some comments below. I think it's a really great drill if it's an area you need to focus on, that lead shoulder movement, or any of the things I discussed in the video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. And right now, YouTube are suggesting the next video from me that is relevant for you. It's just here. Click on that. Check it out at the same time.